MCs come together making millions. Get the motor ready for the white night race. Frag about my bike and put some dollars in your face. How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Today we're gonna be talking about the four oldest clubs that are still in existence. This is amazing business right here. These clubs have been around since the 1800s, late 1800s, and they actually started out one uh, as a bicycle club, and that is a testament to brotherhood right there, an organization as far as it goes with a motorcycle club. Most people know new motorcycle clubs don't last a year. Most of them, it's a godsend if they last five years. So make sure you subscribe, like the video, share it on your social media platforms. It helps us out a ton. Immediately after this video, go over to MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com for the Hollywood and China Doll Show. All replays are available on our not only Discord server, but the podcasting platforms, whatever your favorite is, we're there. So let's get into this right now. The oldest motorcycle clubs around, and one of them, I actually did an interview a couple years ago regarding the Yonkers Motorcycle Club. And it was a fascinating interview. Can you imagine all the history behind these clubs, all the decades that they went through, the different societal changes and attitudes towards motorcycle clubs, and they were able to navigate all those type of issues. Amazing, amazing stuff, man. As you know, or you should know, a lot about motorcycling was dealer promoted. You had, say, you know what, the modern day hog is actually an offshoot of what Harley Davidson used to do in the beginning with getting people together, getting them riding. That was to sell their product. Which is a damn good idea, man. You got to hand it to the manufacturers uh, with starting programs like that. Indian had it. Uh, the, well, you know, everybody knows Indian's been going back and forth between owners. And it's awesome that Polaris has finally got a hold of them. Because Polaris has the backing. A lot of these other companies didn't. Their dealer network's getting a lot better. Harley's actually cutting dealerships now. I give you advice to go over to Adam Sandoval. He actually uh, kind of talks about that, where Harley's cutting dealerships. Good thing or bad thing, you decide, man. But he did have a point with the Harley Davidson dealers. It used to be you can go to any corner almost, like a McDonald's, and you would find one, and basically they'd be competing against each other for business. And that was driving lower sales, man. So Al Bundy, the shoe salesman, as we call him, he might be getting Harley back on its uh, track. The only thing I don't like about them is they really forgot about the customer. But we're not here to talk about that. We're going to be talking about uh, the genesis of uh, motorcycling and all that stuff later in the week. We got uh, hill climbs coming up, uh, talking about them, flat track racing. This week is basically dedicated to the motorcycle itself. Something we always forget about when we talk about MCs and MC history is we got to concentrate on the motorcycle. That's what we got to concentrate on. So that's the reason why this week we'll be talking about that. And yes, I am going to talk about the seven baddest uh, female motorcycle clubs uh, later this week, about Friday, I believe it is. Uh, I have to mention that. Also, guys, uh, when I did that top 10 video, the most influential motorcycle clubs, I believe I said, you know what, that's not the entire list. That is my 
opinion, and again, it's my opinion, and it's not gospel and stuff like that. There's uh, clubs that didn't make the list for myself that might make it for you. Also, I've been getting a lot of people asking, well, what about the black scene and the mixed race scene? I actually uh, suggested the Black Dragon because he knows that scene better than me, to do something about the history of those clubs. You know, I don't want to really speak on a scene I don't know about, man. I, the black and mixed race scene is a total different monster. They do things a lot differently than, say, the white scene does. So if you don't know anything about it, why are you going to talk about it? You know, but there are great clubs out there like the Chosen Few, uh, then you got the freaking, uh, course, you got, uh, the Black Sabbath and stuff. Those are in the mixed race crew. Uh, then you got the Outcast and all that good stuff. So it wasn't intentional. It's just my list. So hopefully you'll be covering that kind of stuff in the future. Uh, we're gonna go, uh... I know you guys are chopping at the bit right now. And what I did was... I went, and thankfully, these uh, guys had a website for this stuff, which is cool. And actually, there is five. There isn't four. My bad, but you know what? I'm recording this early in the freaking morning, so uh, my brain's still not functioning. about to go on a ride and stuff like that. So let's go to these clubs, the oldest ones in the world. And the first one has to be Yonkers, man. Uh, they are out of New York, and they are still going strong. And one of the interesting things is uh, you can tell the different culture shift and everything just by looking in at the way the people dress back then. And again, on the radio, you're going to have to come over and check these pictures out. I can actually describe them the best I can. But one thing that does stand out is the club. It was all suits, man. It looked like it was a more higher society thing back then. Because, let's face it, motorcycles were expensive, they were new. With that being the case, only people with money really had them back then. It's just like cars. It was the people with money. Which, hey, it ain't a bad thing. You know? At least they got it going and all that good stuff. But yeah, they're dressed in all suits and stuff. Now, Yonkers originally started... As a bicycle club. Pretty cool stuff. Like I uh, was talking about, uh, you know, you got these bicycles that are modern these days. They actually have these little, you know, I think you need to get them at 50cc or 80-something cc with those little motors. They got that little gas tank on it. Kind of looks like uh, the motorcycles that first came out was just an engine slapped on a bicycle. And these things are pretty cool, man. I got to get myself one and just toy it around. You want to teach somebody how to ride a motorcycle? Get them that. Maybe that's what I need to do with China Dow, man. Because she cannot coordinate whatsoever on a motorcycle. Oh, sad state of affairs. Anyway, it was a bicycle club. It was founded by Elliot Mason, November 19th. Great month since, you know, November 5th is my birthday. Scorpios, baby. 1879. Can you imagine that? Again, most clubs nowadays don't last a year, and here you have one that started as a bicycle club in 1879, man. That's like when freaking... Uh, <laughs> that is like the Stone Age compared to today, ain't it? Anyway, it consisted of 25 men. They wore grayish brown corduroy uniforms with a polo cap bearing the club's initial and the club colors were crimson and gold. <laughs> you imagine if them boys nowadays, man, and no offense to freaking Yonkers, wore that kind of stuff, you know, the little polo hats. <laughs> 
told you, different culture back then. Anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, Elliot Mason was a Columbia bicycle agent in Yonkers who went to work as a general manager for the Pope manufacturing company at 12 warren street establishing the oldest cycle depot in new york city so not only do we got a motorcycle club history we got a little bicycle history here uh he became uh colonel albert augusta pope's most loyal and trusted companions let's go down a little more here Oh, man, you got to love it, man. They got all their history on this page. And again, I'm going to put uh, the links for these websites in the description box. That way you can do some research yourself on this. And that's one of the biggest things about this program. I'm going to give you enough, like uh, Donna said, I'm going to give you enough to give you an overview of this, and hopefully you take the time to go further research this subject to get you some knowledge. Uh, anyway, there is a photo of Elaine and Ashley Mason. It looks like it's Elaine. Uh, look at that freaking, those old school mustaches and stuff with the little beards. Uh, anyway... He was also one of the founders of the League of American Wheelmen, and that was created in Newport, Rhode Island on May 30th, or 1880. Uh, 150 bike, uh, bicyclists from 32 different clubs came to Newport. So bicycle clubs were a huge thing. It says right here, uh, the American Wheelmen, or the League of the American Wheelmen, they had over 800 bicycle clubs back then. So the sense of freedom and adventure goes all the way back to this time. So naturally, it goes over into a motorcycle club. You got to love it. Uh, let's see here. They also had a legacy of hill climbing contests, lantern runs, historic relay races, endurance races, all that kind of stuff as a bicycle club. Now, hill climbs have a unique type of uh, deal, and yes, it started with bicycles going up there, and it just transformed into motorcycles, which I'll be talking about later on this week, how it's finally making a comeback. If you haven't ever gone to a hill climb, you're missing out, man. Uh, anyway, uh, during the early part of the 1900s, motor bicycles like I was talking about, were being manufactured uh, and several members of the Yonkers Bicycle Club looked to form the Yonkers Motorcycle Club. And here is uh, pictures, and this is from the Smithsonian, which is very interesting business. Uh, the meet at Newport. It sh and it shows the founders on the rocks at Newport and it goes, uh, we cannot furnish a perfect key to that picture. We will try to do some more, uh, then point out some of the more prominent wheelmen. Uh, then it goes on to who they are and stuff like that. Uh, if you're keeping your club's history, which hopefully all motorcycle clubs are, uh, when you have pictures and stuff, maybe you want to label who they are. That way for future members, they'll know a little history. And then it goes on to talk about George Ellis. We just said that. Uh, then, the club's first endurance run. And there was a federation of inter international uh, motorcyclists. And that was uh, a prelude, kind of, to the MA or AMA. Uh, they took a trip from Yonkers to Coney Island in return this was their endurance run. That's just showing you the type of motorcycles that were back then was only 67 miles. Nowadays, that's just going to the store for us because, you know, you go to the store and then you uh, get uh, sidetracked and you want to go and go and go. Uh, there were no mishaps and stuff like that and only about a dozen members participated in the event. 
And then, under the leadership of the president, the club quickly began to set historic records that would inspire motorcyclists for years to come. Uh, Ellis established the first 24-hour mileage record. Yeah, these are all going back then, man, kind of like the Iron Butt Association. Uh, and that time record was from Boston to Chicago. And you got to remember, back in the early 1900s, them roads sucked, man. It's not like you you know today. Uh, yeah, they were pretty shitty, so they must have had an iron ass back then. Uh, January 1st of 1917, the New York State uh, FAM Commissioner George Ellis promoted the first midnight run under the auspices of the Corontano, what is that, Corontano, I don't know, it's some uh, weird shit, motorcycle club. Uh, the first mo midnight run consisted of 30 motorcyclists competing in a 150 mile endurance run that started from Columbus Circle and to Poughkeepsie and return. And then in 1920, he established a two-flag record from the U.S. to the Canada. Uh, you can see it starting to expand the riding area and how the culture was taking shape back then with the different rides the different events and you just see as it goes on more and more people started to get into the scene and he also took a role uh ellis as a motorcycle courier from governor cox of massachusetts to calvin coolidge uh following coolidge's election to vice presidency now the yonkers was among the first motorcycle clubs to affiliate with the AMA, with the association was formed in 24, that's 1924. Uh, numbers were put in a hat, passed around, and drawn at the first official meeting of AMA. Yonkers drew card six, hence charter uh, number six. Uh, Brothers at Reading Motorcycle Club drew card four and again we're gonna get a lot of these other motorcycle clubs that ain't mentioned in this video in something later on and hence their ch low charter number of four so it's very interesting even with the ama history how everything went how everybody flocked to the ama let's talk you know what back in them days there was no television, there was no friggin' internet. So this is the type of entertainment they had, and that entertainment turned into a whole culture, a whole lifestyle. Awesome stuff, man. Uh, they, The Yonkers even uh, started a freaking polo club. Uh, that was the Yonkers turkey run they also created in 28. And... Uh, the success continued to dominate the sport for three next uh, decades. Man, we can do a whole video on Yonkers, man. They really have their history down pat. They archived a lot of this stuff. And if you vig visit uh, the one video I did uh, where I interviewed uh, Yonkers, uh, it's just amazing the stuff he would talk about. Again, I encourage you guys to go over to YonkersMotorcycleClub.net and just look at all the history here, man. It's just unbelievable. And still to this day, I believe they are still members of the AMA. Now, Pasadena Motorcycle Club. That's probably one that you never heard of. Uh... They were established in 1907. 1907. Uh, they're sitting in front of the Pasadena Club uh, Motorcycle House. And there's them old bikes, baby. Uh, <laughs> them little motors, man. What, did they go 30, 40 miles an hour back then? So can you imagine doing a 24-hour ride on the shittiest roads in America back then? My God, man, they, you know what? Them were freaking bikers right there. Uh, it was formed on May 20th, 1907, 
in Pasadena, California. Uh, it is the third oldest motorcycle club in the United States and the oldest in Southern California. Remember, there was actually earlier motorcycle clubs in Europe, and you'll learn about that at a later time. Uh, the older clubs are Yonkers. They were established in 1903. Uh, California's San Francisco Motorcycle Club was formed in 1904. And we're going to be covering San Francisco as well as the Oakland Motorcycle Club. Now, the club's first home was on Green Street in Old Town Pasadena in the early 1900s. Again, I can't get over that picture right there. That's beautiful stuff. Uh, then they moved to an adjacent, uh, to a shipping warehouse post-World War I. Uh, the club's current clubhouse, a World War II era uh, HUD and Pasadena historic landmark, was purchased by the PMC in 1948. And it has had a prominent impact on the motorcycling community in Southern California, which, you know what, that is so true of the motorcycle clubs where they're at. It depends what region I get that territory they're in, but they do bring a big impact where they're located on motorcycling and the area uh, it was the 14th chartered by the AMA. Uh, they had seven members inducted into the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame. Awesome business right there. Uh, the pride of the uh, PMC is historically significant Greenhorn. The 1937 through present ride, which started as a nationally recognized, famously rough, 500 plus mile enduro transversing uh, the mountains and deserts of Southern California. You know, that's one ride that I've always wanted to do is the Appalachia. You know, hit them freaking trails with an enduro. Yeah, maybe like the African Twin or something. I think it'd take it. Uh, it says, uh, well, of course, you know, they have to ruin it, the environmentalists. Uh, environmental scrutiny the greenhorn uh evolved into a popular two-day road ri uh, ride and rally it is still organized and promoted by the pmc the uh ride is open to the public takes its place each year in late spring and summer uh let's see here let's go back to may 21st 1907 Pasadena has a large number of motorcyclists, and the last evening they formed an organization which will be known as the Pasadena Motorcycle Club. The members of the organization concluded their uh, meeting by electing H.C. Fultz as captain, with Philip uh, Sonor as president, Alfred Wegner vice president, uh, Edward Coles, uh, Code and Close, Secretary, and, and Marshall Hayes as the Treasurer. So going all the way back then, they still had their history of who was uh, first elected. And the club is the third of its kind organized in the state, the only other two being in Los Angeles and San Francisco. And the Los, uh, you know, you can look this up, the Los Angeles Herald, uh, Valium uh, 34, number 233, 22nd of May of 2007, and that is the Pasadena Motorcycle Club, the third oldest motorcycle club in the United States. Now, the Oakland Motorcycle Club, it was established in the same year, and it that was 1907, and it's been uh, active ever since. Uh, in 2007, it celebrated 100 years of continuous operation. It's over 100 years old now, man. My God. And they are they hold charter number 72 in the AMA. And they're also male and females in the Oakland Motorcycle Club. Uh, they uh, ride a 
wide variety of motorcycles, streets, dual sports, dirt bikes, uh, total membership, including the honorary life members. They're at 80, which is a good number, man, for an old organization like that. They're not one of them clubs they want to go expand all over the world. They stay locally. They keep their history uh, at the highest freaking uh, level of respect for themselves, which in a world where everybody wants to expand now and be like all the other clubs that it took 50 freaking years to do, good stuff, man, good stuff. Uh, OMC members use their own money and labor and cash from fundraising events to acquire and build their own club hall, they call it. Uh, it was completed in 83 and a major expansion was carried out in 206. All the club's activities are strongly supported by the women's auxiliary. And it goes on to say regular club meetings are held every Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. And guests are welcome and their sister club is the Greater Vancouver of Canada, and it's been a sister club since 78, and they are avid supporters of AMA. Uh, they host three public events each year, the Tree Pled uh, Ridge Run uh, that in July, the Shelton uh, 300 Dual Sport, and the Jackhammer Enduro. Uh, let's see if we can get some pictures here. There you go. There's some pictures of them heading to Mexico. Uh, same group. And then uh, note the OMC members that you have videos on. Okay. Let's see what they got here. There's some of the rides that we're looking at on YouTube. Beautiful scenery right there, man. Jesus Christ. Uh, then they go to Carson City, stuff like that. So that is the Oakland Motorcycle Club in 1907. Now, 1904, the San Francisco Motorcycle Club. In November of uh, 1904, the SFMC holds its first uh, official meeting at the Thor Motorcycle Shop. So even all the way back then, man, members loved going to motorcycle shops and hanging out. Uh, there was 12 charter members. Uh, they included C.C. Daddy Hopkins, Thomas Torme, George uh, Payton, Joe Holly, and Henry Rockwell. 1906, uh, April 17, the club holds its first dance in a new hall. Uh, five hours afterwards, uh, the Great Earthquake shakes the city. Holy cow. <clears throat> and that was April 18th. Uh, that was that great uh, San Francisco earthquake back then. Now the club room was ravaged uh, with all its possessions. Uh, four weeks later, the club holds a reunion run. 1907, the club finds a new club room. Uh, the 1910, it becomes the first uh, motorcycle club to admit women members. 1910, women members started coming in. They could vote in club rooms well before they could vote in either state or federal elections. So motorcycle clubs, even though the media loves bashing on us, were actually... The ones who were given women's rights all the way back before your own government was. Uh, then the road captain, uh, Valani Davis, set a new uh, transcontinental uh, record riding his Indian from San Francisco to New York and back. Uh, 1911, the membership uh, hits its peak with over 500 members. Uh, that was 1911. Uh, then it just has a whole bunch of stuff. They joined the American Motorcycle Association as Club 142, and Dud Perkins won the National Hill Climb Championship. Again, again, hill climbing was huge back then. And there's a hill right down the street from me that's going to be included in the video hill track uh, climb and all that good stuff uh the history is just uh their centennial uh year 
2004. That was their 100th year. It was a blast with motorcyclists from around the globe dropping in to make a fantastic year of celebration. Uh, 2006 through 2009, David Schiller wins his fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh Top Rider of the Year award in the AM District 36 Roadwire uh, uh, Division. So they keep a lot Stuff. Join the Insane Throttle Members Only Club on YouTube or Spotify and receive exclusive content Monday through Friday at 9.20 a.m. Central Standard Time. Your membership in the Throttle Club helps keep the show going strong. Get your wake and bake going and settle in Monday through Friday at 8.15 a.m. Central Standard Time for a blast from the past with some good old shock jock radio join hollywood and china on youtube and spotify for the madhouse morning show you won't be disappointed and if you are that sounds like you a problem cupcake tune in mondays live at 7 p.m central standard time on youtube for the madhouse monday night raw with hollywood and marco grab a beer or some wacky tobacco and sit back and Bust the gut. Join us for the Beat Can Podcast live every Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. No subject is off limits and get knowledge you can't get from college. Do you claim that you can party? Do you think you can keep the pace all night? Join Hollywood and Marco from Marco's Motorcycle Nation as they live stream the Midwest Chopper Fest July 22nd. Gates open at noon. Chopper, Bobber, Sonic, Custom, and Vintage Classes. Midwest Chopper will also be adding a Best in Show category, the Monster Trophy. Of course, there will be live music, food, and booze available, plus other shenanigans. Get what I mean? Bring your choppers and come party and hang out with Hollywood from Insane Throttle and Marco from Marco's Motorcycle Nation at the Midwest Chopper Fest and 304 Vickman Road, Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin.